We've got to talk about Milwaukee Nitrous Carbide. Not only do they have a new generation of nitrous carbide sawzall blades, they're also moving into oscillating multi-tool nitrous carbide. We're going to show you how these blades cut in cast iron on the recip saw side, and we're going to show you some extreme cutting we tried with the oscillating multi-tool blades. So let's start off by answering the question, what exactly is nitrous carbide? Nitrous carbide started on sawzall blades. We have the wrecker, we have the torch. And a lot of people think that this is just the coating on the blade. That's not the case. It's the carbide blend, the grade, it's the blade height, or in the case of the multi-tool blades, the thickness. It's how they attach it. It's the tooth geometry. There's a whole lot that goes into making something a nitrous carbide blade. On the recip saw side, these are purpose built for the toughest materials you're gonna run into. And the same goes for Milwaukee's new oscillating multi-tool nitrous carbide blades. We ran a little experiment because bolts, yeah, Screws, yeah, sure. Threaded rod, okay, cool. But what about number five rebar? We decided to take the extreme metal nitrous carbide blade and see if we could use an oscillating multi-tool to cut through that rebar, and we can't wait to show you what happened. Clearly, these are some really tough blades. Now, if you want to get your hands on them, they're going to be available in singles and three packs and five packs when they launch. First of all, we've got the extreme metal. And this is when you know you're going to be cutting into metal, metal primarily, all that good stuff. You're flush cutting, you know you got screws, bolts, even threaded rod that you want to take out. And like we were talking about before, the extreme materials blade is more your general purpose one. So you're doing your remodeling, you don't know what's behind the wall when you're trying to flush cut for the tile or whatever it is, and you go ahead and use this. So if you hit nails and screws, it's gonna deal with them fine. But again, the difference between these two, the extreme metal is gonna have the longest life in metal specifically, but you're gonna get faster cutting through the wood materials with the extreme materials blade. So that's your general purpose every day. This is the blade that you want if you want the top of the line. Now shifting over to the Sawzall line of nitrous carbide blades, both the Wrecker and the Torch are on their second generation. And that means that they've made some subtle changes, but those changes have made a big difference. Now, take the Torch for instance. This blade has gone from 7 TPI and now it's 8 TPI. And of course, they're doing a lot of tweaking on the metallurgy and the connection and the tooth geometry and everything else to make these blades better. We didn't want to just take their word for it, so we did some testing of our own. We wanted to see if the lifespan was anywhere close to what Milwaukee was claiming. We set our M18 fuel super saws all right in between speed 3 and speed 4 and got to work. With the Gen 1 blade, we were able to make the first cut pretty cleanly and pretty steadily. We were able to force our way through about half of another cut. But by the end of it, there were teeth missing off of that blade and we could tell that it was done. The back half of the blade was actually still cutting with some of its teeth, but the front end was done. Now when we switched over to the second generation, the first cut just melted through beautifully and the second cut did really well. The third cut we noticed about halfway through we were really starting to slow down, but we did finish the cut. When we took a look at the blade at the end, we noticed that all the teeth were still on there. There was a little bit of damage on the front cutting teeth, but the back teeth were in good shape. And we could tell what we were cutting. When we rocked the saw, we could tell that that was melting better through the back end than the front end, but the whole thing was still cutting well. So, what would we consider the lifespan in this particular pipe? Well, for Gen 1, we'd say it's one cut. And for Gen 2, we definitely got through two good cuts. Even if you look at with damaged teeth, one and a half cuts versus three cuts, we got twice the life out of that second generation blade compared to the first generation. But the two things I want you to keep in mind, number one, these are purpose built. Number two, they're designed to lower your cost per cut. We've got some math to take a look at what those cost savings actually look at. So let's talk about cast iron and let's talk about the three different ways that we can cut this. So starting with a bimetal blade, 25 blades to make one cut. At $3 each, you're looking at $75 for every cut through that cast iron, not to mention all of the time and the vibration that's going into your arms at the same time. Now take a standard carbide blade. Typically, you're gonna be looking at 10 to $20 per cut, depending on the blade quality. So we'll just put that in the middle. Let's call it $15 per cut. Now take your new torch blade, this is going to be able to make five to six cuts in cast iron per blade. 
So your cost per cut ends up being between five and six dollars depending on how many cuts you're able to get out of it. Not to mention, you're not changing blades nearly as often and it's a little bit easier on your arms because you're actually gonna cut faster. Obviously, we're excited about these blades, but we really wanna know what you think. So drop us a comment below and let us know if you've used them and how they worked out for you or if you're planning to buy either the Sawzall or oscillating multi-tool blades. Till then, we'll see you later and as always, thanks for watching.